Hi, everybody. Thank you um, for joining us tonight. I'm going to give it a couple minutes while um, everyone gets settled to make sure we're all good to go. Perfect. We are slowly going through and making sure everyone has the appropriate settings. Um, and for anybody who uh, was wondering if you want to go back and look at this later, the meeting is recorded. So whether you would like to show your video or not, totally understandable either way, um, this will just be available for other mentors um, and coaches that are interested in learning more info in preparation for the event this week. So now that I've given it a couple minutes, I think I'm going to get started um, just with a brief introduction of myself and Renee, and then we'll move on with introductions of all of our key people on the call tonight. Um, I'm Emma. I um, have been I'm one of the first senior mentors in Wisconsin and I've been serving in my role for five years now and am part of the Seven Rivers Regional Planning Committee. So um, tonight we're putting this on to kind of go over all the basics, make sure you all feel prepared. Nobody has any questions when we arrive to the venue on Wednesday. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wednesday or Thursday, but one or the other. And I'll hand it over to Renee. Hi, my name is Renee becker Blow. I'm president of First Wisconsin. Um, really, the people that do a lot of the planning and coordinating uh, for this event are on the Seven Rivers Regional Planning Committee um, and our PDPs, Jeff and Barry. And so I have uh, Betty here and a number of other members of the committee um, that can feel free to unmute and say hello. And we also have Sherry, who's our volunteer coordinator, um, who can help us with the key volunteer introductions. So that's where we can start. Hi, I'll start. I'm Betty Baker, and I'm a mentor with TC Robotics and the co-chair of this event. And we can't wait to have everyone there this week. I'll go. I'm uh, DJ Johnson. I'm a mentor for the uh, Sir Lancer Bots team, 2977 and La Crescent. Um, been doing that for six years, I think, and I've been on this Seven Rivers Regional Planning Committee for, I think, about the same amount of time. So uh, I'm the load, load in, load out manager. So if you need to load in or load out, come and see me. Um, also, uh, um, I'll be an inspector, robot inspector for the duration. So anyhow, that's me. Excellent, thank you. I'm Kimberly. I am the safety manager for my second year. Very exciting, thank you. Sherry, did you wanna unmute? Or Kristen? I'll go. So I'm Kristen Flickinger. I will be the judge advisor for this event. This is my third year with um, the Seven Rivers event as the judge advisor, as well as a planning committee member. Perfect. Excellent. Awesome. And I don't think and that Sherry is on. I think the Sherry we're seeing in the chat is not the same Sherry. Um, so are we? Yeah, it's moving. Our... <laughs> I'm, I'm oh, on. Good. Oh, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> I had trouble getting on. Sorry about that. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Sherry Ireland. I'm the volunteer coordinator, one of the volunteer coordinators for our Seven Rivers Regional this year. 
Thanks for all being here. Uh, thank you so much. And then I think we have one of our MCs. You want to say hello or game announcer? Uh, Jerry Christ, I will be co emceeing with Blair and game announcing uh, when I'm not uh, doing the other thing. So. Fantastic. And I think Barry missed my introduction of him. So, Barry, if you wanted to unmute and say hi, now's the time. Thank you. Yep. Hello, everyone. Uh, Barry Black. So, uh, I'm one of the co PDPs uh, in the state and looking forward to uh, join everyone this weekend at the Seven Rivers Regional. And many thanks to uh, the local committee for all their hard work uh, this season working with us to get it ready. Uh, I think it should be a great time for everyone. So, thanks. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And then Sherry, can you remind me, um, there was a contact that needed to do the introduction early. Yes, that um, is Mike Paulnell, our um, head referee. Excellent. I don't know if I see him on yet. Okay, that's fair. All right. Any other key volunteers that would like to say hi? Now is your chance. Awesome. Um, as they continue to drop in and out, we will make sure that we introduce them when we can. Um, but we are going to stick to our agenda and get through things. I will say that the Wisconsin Regional um, call only took about an hour, so I'm trying to beat that for this call um, while also answering all your questions. Um, if you do have any questions pop up, feel free to unmute yourself. You can raise your hand with a nice raise hand feature, um, or you can use the Q&A section and you can type out a question um, in there and we can get those answered as well. So um, maybe somebody can give me like a thumbs up if they can actually see Renee's previous Q&A in the chat from before they were in the meeting. Because on my end, it says 10 minutes ago when I was on, but I just want to make sure you all can see it as well. So, if, okay, thumbs up. That's perfect. Great. Um, so first thing we want to go over are some of those general reminders about being a good human, being a kind person, this, that, and the other thing. If you all stop by the game manual, which I know everybody is familiar with in one way or another, um, E102 is be nice. And G201, I want to say is be a good person. So um, as a reminder, this is an event for our kids and for all the students that we work with. So at the end of the day, Although I know we would all love to win, this event is about um, encouraging them, teaching them, and making them stronger students and doing all of the things that FIRST loves to do. So we ask that you please practice kindness and patience and understanding with both volunteers, um, students, staff, any and all of the above. Um, I could go into detail about the different sort of things that qualify as not being a good person, but I know you all can read um, because you signed up for this meeting and are here. So obviously you read something. So I encourage you to check those out on your own because we do take it very seriously. We want you to be kind to one another um, because we're all here to have fun at the end of the day. Great. Let me make sure I'm just hitting all of my things. And then Renee, do you want to touch on YPP really quick? Yes, I do. All right. Um, Emma, can you tell me if you can see my one window? Hang on, you can't yet. I believe I Mike is on too, by the way, Renee. Oh, good. Mike, do you want to say hello? Mike? Okay, I might be wrong. Sorry. No, he no, was. no I, problem. I think he was only an attendee, so maybe he can. I just moved him up so he can talk. Okay, thank you for that. Mike, if you 
Oh, he's got uh, it. Can Unmute you hear me and introduce yourself. Yep. Yes, we can. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I don't know if you have to go through any type of intro, but I'm your head ref for this uh, event. So, hello. Let's see, I'm... that's perfect. Yep. Okay. <laughs> We just wanted to put uh, at least voices to names, so that was our intention with this. All right, so Emma, can you see my screen? Okay, and it's the Youth Protection Program. It's loading on my side, but I believe it will be once it loads. <laughs> <laughs> because we wouldn't be a technical program if we didn't have technical difficulties. Okay. Mm. Oh, I found it. All right. I figured out what went wrong. There we go. And we go right here. OK, there we go. All right, now you should be able to see my resource library screen for Youth Protection Program. Fantastic. Excellent. All right, so as a reminder, um, First HQ, they have a code of conduct. Um, and in their mission to inspire these wonderful students and technology leaders, uh, they remind everyone to remain gracious and professional at all times. I wanted to just make sure that everyone remembered uh, that you are able to um, report concerns via the first reporting structure. Um, so you can kind of see a little bit more about what that looks like here. Um, if there's any issues that take place at the event, we would really appreciate it if you could rope in uh, the event staff. Um, if there's a youth protection concern, you can document it here. If there's a medical incident, um, typically we're really on top of that. We'll have more updates related to event managing um, and medical incidences shortly. And then there are other reporting processes as well. Um, and so you can see all of those here. It's definitely something that we do pay attention to. But again, uh, it is faster if you include us in the process so that we're able to respond as soon as possible because otherwise it goes to first and then it has to get back to us eventually. And that doesn't always happen same day in real time. So thank you for, for lo looping us in for that. And if you have any other questions or related uh, concerns, you can take a look at the different uh, youth protection policies, trainings that are available, et cetera, and take a look at them there. So I'm going to stop sharing. There we go. And hand it back to Emma. So, and I'm going to start sharing. So if any questions pop up um, while I'm going over this section, Renee, if you could just let me know. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to get into schedule first. So hopefully you all can see my screen. Yes, okay, perfect. Um, so this is a high level overview of the schedule for this year's event at the Seven Rivers Regional. Um, I just wanna walk through and highlight a few things. So we'll start um, in chronological order. So we'll start with Thursday morning. So for any teams that are not loaded in on Wednesday night, um, starting at 745 teams can load in and set up the pit. Um, in the pit area and that's from 7:45 to 9 the venue will open at 7:45, so that's when everyone will come in but only those five people will be allowed um, in the pit area that time and you can see at 8 30 that's when um, pits machine shop registration everything like that opens so that's when everyone will be able to head down that way um, and then there's a variety of things that come after that and we will get to load in with DJ um, in a little more detail in a little bit. So just keep that in mind. Um, things to note. So inspection opens at nine, practice field opens half an hour following um, because there's a rule, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, for safety reasons to be inspected prior to being on the practice field. Okay, great. Head nods mean good. <laughs> um, 
while that's all going on, we've also got some great things going on on the fifth floor of the venue. Um, we'll start with a student ambassador meeting at 930. This is when um, we'll, I will be meeting with students and we're going to talk about um, a VIP event that will be going on on Friday morning. And ambassadors are the people that we want to talk to our VIPs about the event. As much as I could talk about first for ever and ever and ever, um, at the end of the day, they don't want to hear from me. They want to hear from the students that it's directly impacting. So we'll meet at 930 on the fifth floor. It'll be really clearly indicated so all the students will know where to go. If you have an interested student or students that would like to attend, please feel free to just send them up that way at 930 on Thursday. Um, following that session, there's That's also yeah. following that. Was that me? No. OK. Um, following that session, there is going to be a mental health coping mechanism session hosted by one of the teams um, that will also be on the fifth floor. Um, and room and everything will be listed there. Lunch break is at 11 on Thursday. Um, and then for those of you that have impact teams or Dean's List teams, you should have received an email from our judge advisor on Sunday, letting you know um, timing of things, but there will be um, kind of an opportunity for you to meet with the judge advisor and go through the spaces. Kristen, I don't know if you wanna add anything additional to that. Nope, I think we that covers it. Everyone should have got an email if you didn't. Please let us know and we can get you the details. Um, Dean's list will be at noon and then impact at 1230. Again, if you have an impact team, please only send one student and one adult. Um, we have a lot of teams interviewing. Um, and so I don't know that we have enough space for everyone up in the room. Um, and the schedules for each of those will be posted following each of those check in meetings. Um, the Dean's list button, students will get their buttons at that meeting as well. Um, so please do encourage them to attend. And then if you do have impact award, please check the settings on your videos if you have them. Um, I was going through trying to check some in advance um, and download them because the internet's not always most reliable at the venue. Um, and I was having some uh, access permission errors. So um, we'll check through that during that meeting as well. Awesome. Kristen, I just want to clarify yeah. the one one student and one adult that was for the deans, not the impact, correct? So deans list, um, there's six teams that have two students each, so it'd be both students from the team plus their adult mentor. The impact is normally a team of three, um, but a team of three plus your adult mentor times 26 teams eligible is 100 people. Um, so I'm asking for just one of those students on that team. And Kristen, there's a question in the Q&A for you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you can see it. I don't, and I don't know whether this pertains to deans or impact, but about making judges packets. So I'm guessing impact. So that, we'll be- That is not only, not only for impact, we're talking about all the judges that walk around for the different awards um, that come by our pit. We want to make up um, some judge packets. It's got some merch in it. And we were wondering if we could put information about our team and could we put information about the robot? I know we're, I don't think we're supposed to put information about the robot. I know at some other events, they've told us that we're not supposed to put information about a robot in the, in anything that's given to the judges. But what about information about our team? So I've never heard that before. Um, we do collect materials in the pits um, during pit interviews. Um, teams or each team will be seen by a pair of machine judges and a pair of team judges. So um, teams will be seen by at least four judges. Um, and so we collect team information. We te collect uh, robot information. Um, any materials we get, though, we will be returning back to you um, at the end of the event. Um, as regards to your um, team or your robot. Um, and then there are, so that's what you guys will be seeing. Okay, thank you. That answers my question. 
And Kirby, I also saw you have another question for whether the lacrosse center is cashless or if they do take cash. And I'm going to reach out to the powers that be. Maybe Jeff is letting me give an answer right now. Yeah, I, I have not heard that they would be cashless. I don't, wouldn't expect that without being notified. So I, I think you're going to be safe with cash. Okay, and if I, thank and you. And if Jeff. I'm wrong, I guess I'm the ATM. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jeff. Awesome. Any other questions pertaining to um, judging? Great. I'm going to keep powering through. Um, directly following that impact and Dean's List check-in, there will be an impact exchange on the fifth floor um, hosted by one of the teams. Generally a pretty informal type of event. Um, more just to allow teams the opportunity to present to one another and give them that space for that. Kirby. Uh, for the ambassador meeting, it, <clears throat> we're bringing up part of our team on Wednesday and the other part is coming up on Thursday and they'll probably be up there say 11 o'clock or noon for the rest of the team. What if our ambassador is coming up later and is not there for the earlier meeting on Thursday. If um, that is the case, then you can, I would have them stop by pit admin sometime that afternoon and mention that they want to be a student ambassador, but weren't able to make the meeting and then they can get in touch with me and we can go over, go over what that looks like. Okay. So that shouldn't, shouldn't be an issue. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I think we're still doing good in the chat with everything. Um, so then following that, lots of different sessions going on, and this is all while practice matches are happening, so keep that in mind. Um, there will also be um, a first Wisconsin discussion on a potential transition to districts after 2025. Um, once again, on the fifth floor, open discussion. Um, hearing more what our local teams think about that. And then um, a session that is more focused on educators. Renee, if you can speak to that. Yep, focus on, for educators, admin, um, people working with educators or admin. Um, it's really about how FIRST aligns with the upcoming Wisconsin Career Readiness Standards um, and how FIRST essentially does all the amazing things that we know it does, but ways that you can tie that into what the state of Wisconsin wants your students to learn. So uh, anyone that comes to that session, it's open. Um, you can RSVP to it if you'd like, but we'll basically be covering some of those specific items along with like educator uh, resources and opportunities where you as a mentor, if you work with educators can share it, or if you are an educator or teacher, you can come in and take a look yourself. So we'll have that there and ready to go. If you could pre-register, that'd be great. We're a little light on RSVPs. Um, and so if we, uh, we needed to adjust that slightly, we could. Um, and it, that is located on our um, event page. You can find the information. I'll link it in the chat. And we will also hit the first Wisconsin website in a little bit. So we'll double hit it that way. Um, and then. Just as a general reminder, the pits close at eight o'clock on Thursday. There's a few other things happening throughout the day, such as match schedule being posted, um, impact and Dean's list schedules being posted. And I believe Kristen said those will be posted after that meeting, correct? Yes, that's correct. So as soon as we leave each of those meetings, I will post them at pit admin. And then teams can take a picture at the meeting too. So. Awesome. Um, so all of that will be available by the end of the day at eight o'clock. We will all sing the goodbye song and see you bright and early on Friday morning. The venue will open at 730. Um, pits and everything else will open at eight o'clock. So you're free to get into the venue, but you won't be able to access the pits until eight. Um, opening ceremonies are 830 to nine. Following that, qualification matches, impact Dean's List Award interviews. Um, throughout the day, 
in the afternoon, and now I can't see my time, at two o'clock, we will have a student choir practice. So if you have any students that are interested in participating in a robot choir, um, please have them meet. We will be doing announcements throughout the day in the pits, um, but just encourage your students if there's anyone interested to head up at that time, there will be a sign up at PID admin as well to remind people. Um, and then on Friday evening, we end with the award ceremony. Um, we get to do the fun mentor parade, which is honestly probably one of my favorite parts of every single event. And following the closing ceremonies, we will close everything up. So I highly encourage you to encourage your students to take everything out of the pits prior to this. So we don't have everyone trying to rush back into the pits while people are rushing out. Makes it a lot easier for getting your kids out and getting you all to dinner at a reasonable hour. And then on Saturday, we will start venue opens again at 7.30. Everything else opens at eight. We'll have opening ceremonies, um, finish sort of any sort of interviews, qualification matches, alliance selections. Following alliance selections, loadout will be available anytime following that and DJ will go over into more detail. Um, and then after awards and everything, we will be at the end of the event. And I've had a few people um, ask about this schedule. I'm going to give you a moment to zoom out if anybody wants to take a picture of it or screenshot it right now. Otherwise, I will include the most updated copy in the recording that I send out after this meeting. So I'll give everyone a couple seconds while I gather what we're doing next. I believe it's the load in and load out process. It is. Perfect. So I hope you all have taken a moment and now I'm going to stop sharing and reshare. Well, first I'll see what DJ wants. DJ, would you like me to share the load in load out document? Or do you want to speak to it first? Uh, you can pull it up on the screen. That's fine. Doesn't okay. hurt to have the information up. Awesome. Uh, just in general, we'll follow the same process that we did last year. It seemed to work pretty well. Um, load in starts at 6 p.m. on Wednesday evening and runs through 8. So if you want to come early, earlier than that, that's fine, but you need to stay in the queue out on Front Street south of the Lacrosse Center, um, south of the covered <clears throat> loading area. I'll have the um, queue manager standing out there, right at the entrance to the covered area. So please uh, just wait until loading time begins at six, and then the person out on the street will direct you into one of our um, hopefully four loading areas. And if, uh, if everything's clear, we should be able to move people in and out of there pretty quickly. Uh, basically, there's four four slots, plus there's kind of an overflow area that's out on the street where we can unload teams if we need to, especially if we have like big buses and that kind of thing, which we have a few. Um, and then if it's not raining or snowing, uh, you know, that works. If it's raining or snowing, we'll try and get everybody under the covered area for, for load in. Um, yeah, please follow the directions of the queue manager. And go into the uh, go into the unloading areas as they tell you to. If uh, everybody kind of stays in their in their zone, then it moves along pretty quickly. Because when people are done, then they can leave immediately, and other others can come in. If you pull in and you, like pull in too far, block other people in, then it slows everybody down. So the whole point is just to make it run smoothly, at least as much as we can. Um, so yeah, there'll be a queue manager out there on the street, so wait for them. We won't let anybody in until six. Um, we may let one or two cars back up to the doors, but nobody comes in until six. Um, reminder that there's only five people to do the load in per team. That that does not include a driver. The driver needs to stay with the vehicle because uh, as soon as your gear is unloaded out of the trailer or truck or whatever your vehicle is, you need to move it out of there so we can get somebody else in. So uh, I plan to have another person 
out in the middle of the loading area to kind of help direct people in as they park and pull in and back in and whatever that needs to be done there. So. Anyhow, that's the process for load in. Uh, there are two doors. One of them is a, and, and they're both labeled. One is door one and one is door two. Door one is kind of a double man door. that's kind of under the middle of the loading area. And that one uh, comes into the building. If you go straight in, you'll end up in the uh, practice field. So don't do that. Turn to your left and you'll end up in the pit area. But we should have some signs out there for that. And then the big, the big load in door is uh, a big overhead door that's actually just outside the covered area. So if it's raining or snowing or something, uh, we'll probably still have to use it, but uh, we'll see if we can get people uh, in and out under the covered area. So that's load in. And then uh, the same thing re repeats on Thursday morning. So uh, and there's usually not a whole lot a uh, handful of teams that are coming in on on uh, Thursday, so that's fine. We'll we'll be out there and we'll deal with that. Should not be an issue. Uh, load out the process is a little more detailed. So basically, what we want to do is have uh, each team when they're done with their um, done with their matches and they're thinking about getting ready to leave, basically pack up the pit first. And coordinate with your driver by cell phone or whatever method that you got. And uh, don't show up in the queue until the team is is packed up and has a sign as and has a load up time. So we use this kind of a pass system that seemed to work pretty well. So basically, pack up the equipment, get everything ready to go, but don't take it out of the pit. Um, you'll see Kimberly, the safety manager. Fine. Well, first of all, you come to me. I'll be over by the big loadout door. Uh, sign up for a time. So I've got 15 minute time blocks basically all afternoon. Um, pick a time when you think you'll be loaded and ready to go, and your driver will be in the queue and available. And don't bring the stuff up to the door. Don't bring your pits up to the doors until um, until your time because otherwise it'll just be a big jam up by the doors. So, I thought it was, I checked about with the paper and then they took it up to you to do the load out tie. Yeah. Well, they can, if they want to, if they want to pick a load out time, that's fine, but they can't, um, they can't do any load out or anything until they've got a time and they've got the pass from you. So basically you're right. Talk okay. to Kim. She'll give you she'll give you a, one of the little loadout slips. Uh, you can come up to me with the slip when your pit is basically ready or almost ready at least. She'll she'll inspect it to make sure you are ready, and then uh, get a time and coordinate with your driver and make sure your driver's there close to the head of the queue at the right time. And then the queue manager outside will will uh, flag you in and put you in a spot so we can get the teams put their hardware out there at the same time the driver's out there so that's the goal um if your driver can't get there for his loadout time then um, um if for some reason he doesn't get there on time we'll give that slot to somebody else and we'll slot you in the next available opening so the goal is not to make people wait the goal is to get people in and out as fast as possible so that's uh, that's what we're trying to do. And uh, if we don't sort of match the drivers up with their equipment at the doors, it'll be a, a big crowded mess, which which uh, we're trying to avoid. So that's how it works. Uh, when you load in, if you need a map for, um, well, we'll give everybody a map that shows the load zones. I probably can't see that. To help when you're uh, coming into the area and on the back of the map, there we go, the back of the map. Okay, that's the load zone map. So that's where we're trying to get everybody parked for load in. And then uh, the back of the map is a little, uh, a separate map that shows how to get to the city's parking area up on the north side. Or 
the south side Oktoberfest grounds, but it's north of La Crosse Center, about, I don't know, six, eight blocks. So when you drive up uh, 2nd Street, you'll basically, where the road kind of wise up there, it'll basically be, basically be a one way coming right at you. So you have to stay to your left and kind of go along the Oktoberfest grounds, and then you'll be in an enclosed, fenced in parking area that's open to the public. So it's, it's where you want to park your trailers. And it's free. So, so that's parking. And then also um, for loadout, I've got this procedure printed out. I'm going to run around and hand this out to every team in the morning on Saturday so that they have instructions for loadout. So, and I'll have it posted up by the uh, overhead door where I'm going to be stationed at. So if anybody has any questions about it, see me, look at your handout, talk to Kimberly, um, we'll make it work. So and I that's think basically we, uh, what I've got. It looks like we have a question, Kirby. Hey, DJ, oh, this is Kirby Nichols. Our yeah. team is planning to come in. I'm gonna be driving my truck with a few students with me. And we'll have a second mentor coming in another vehicle, bringing a few students, all for the load in. So, because we have to have two adults and we've got two vehicles to bring students in so that we can get all the students that we need for the load in. So, when I come get in line in my truck pulling the trailer, where can the other mentor park? his vehicle or does he just get in line behind me and we have both vehicles there in line? Um, I would say we, we don't want both vehicles in the loading area. We want the one with the trailer in the loading area, but the best thing to do would be to have both be in line together so you got your people together because I don't yep. want the trailer in there and only like two people to unload it. That's not going to work. Right. So That's why we want the both vehicles in line there. But have both vehicles there and then tell the person at the uh, queue that, you know, what the story is. And then they'll okay. probably just have you park temporarily outside the covered area along the street there. Yep. You know, until okay. the until the until the driver drops the kids off and then he needs to, you know, take the vehicle and go park elsewhere. Yeah, there's, yep. there's and then parking. That, that way we got our second adult to walk in with the kids so the kids aren't there without an adult while I'm moving my truck and trailer. And I'm gonna park my truck and trailer then across the street at the hotel. They have approved that for me. Then can I walk back across the street and get back in the lacrosse center? Can I come in the front or do I need to come all the way around to the back to come in? Well, you can come in the back. I don't have any problem with that, but I don't know if the front's open at that point. No, the front the front won't be open, so you yeah, don't have right? to come around the back. Um, it's still it's still a very short walk from the parking lot though of of the Radisson. Okay, yeah, I'm at the home too. It's still a short walk. From oh, the okay. Home too. <clears throat> Other otherwise, there's a garage. That, that, see the G on the map that's on 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 the screen right now. That that's a I think it's like a dollar to park there. So that's another another good option. Okay. Yeah, it's like eight hours for all day. I don't know how much it is for an hour, but. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. I'll park at the home too and just walk back down J Street and Front Street till I get to the Lacrosse Center. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Any other any other questions? Yeah, just I just want to make sure whoever's driving the trailers uh, and the vehicles. Make sure you stay with it and you and you leave the area as soon as you unload. Even though your kids are bringing stuff in, yet yeah, it'll be under the covered area, and uh, you need to get the vehicle out of there as soon as possible so we can get other other people in. So, and DJ, I'll just I'll just reiterate the advice I put in chat here. But the, the first thirty to forty five minutes tend to be the most stressful. Um, if you if you happen to arrive after that, you're, you'll probably find that it's all the, there. There won't be a wait. And think things will be a lot easier. Um, so if you're not if you're not trying to maximize on the two hour window, um, you might you might consider not not trying to be there right off right at the beginning. Yeah, there'll be a queue of vehicles out there because there's always several that get there like an hour or two ahead of time and just wait. 
So uh, there'll be a queue. It runs down uh, J St or Front Street, excuse me, uh, south of La Crosse Center, and then it may wrap around to J Street. But um, yeah, if you want to hold off and wait till the second hour of load in, it'll probably be a little, little easier. Or if you came on Thursday morning, there's usually not too many there. Okay. And, and you are allowed to use both both load in periods if you if you need. So if you if you want to come in at was it 7:45 on Thursday morning and and finish up your pit setup? You're allowed to do that with with five five people. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I'm not seeing any on my end. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, DJ. Um, and I'm going to take this moment to direct you all to the First Wisconsin website. So for those of you that may not have seen that parking document before, um, it is available along with a lot of other useful information on our website, um, which hopefully you all can see right now. The yeah. awesome, the address for it is firstinspireswi.org. You'll end up on a page that looks like this. Um, to find Seven Rivers event info, FRC events, and Seven Rivers Regional. And this will provide you with, this is a basic event schedule. So I know a few people have mentioned that already in the chat, um, but we'll get a more detailed one. Um, a few helpful things, load in slash load out. I'm not going to click on it because it's going to download this document for maybe the fourth time to my computer. <laughs> uh, but the document we just viewed is linked right here in the load in section. And then for parking, you can check out this link right here, which directs you to this page, which looks pretty identical to the thing we were just looking at. All of these are different parking options that are available. I personally do not live in La Crosse, so I don't know all the pricing, but from what Terry said in the chat, there's a couple that are free after 6 p.m. on certain days of the week, um, which is not as applicable to us, but always an option. So these are a lot of different, relatively affordable. I live in Milwaukee, so I think anything not in Milwaukee is affordable for parking. <laughs> so lots of different options for parking anywhere that you need to while you're here in the class. Let me see. I don't think there's anything else I need to share here. So let's just see where I'm at in my list. Next, we're on to venue info. So let me stop sharing so I can share again. Okay. Um, so this is a high level overview of the venue. Um, I'm going to start on page two, actually, because that is kind of where you come into the venue. So this is the main front door. I don't know what street it's on. <laughs> um, so I'm not very helpful there. Um, but this is going to be your main entryway. Um, if you enter through the doors over here, that'll take you to the main arena. Using this staircase up towards the top will take you downstairs to the pits. There's also elevator access over here. Um, and then a variety of other things that will be going on, including T-shirt sales, an FLL Explorer Expo, FLL and FGC demos, scholarship row, sponsor showcase, anything and everything you can imagine. So check those out while you guys are coming in on and off throughout the day, feel free to take a look. Um, there's a lot of great stuff that'll go on around here. Then looking at the main level where I think a lot of people will spend their time. Um, so as a reminder from this floor going down or using this elevator here, we'll put you out right here at this staircase. Um, and this is how you get access to the pits. I do have a more detailed pit map for anyone that needs to see it, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but this is just a general overview. So the pits are this way. Inspection, we have pit admin, spare parts, first aid, 
There is a quiet room similar in the same space that we've hosted it in years past, along with a prayer room for those that need to use it. Um, all of this is accessible down this hallway here. So you can access that there. Additionally, this is how teams will access the practice field. Then um, something a little different to what we've done in years past, and somebody please jump in and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, teams will have access to both sides of the stands. There will not be a black drape um, on this side as in years past. So teams can sit on both sides for viewing. Um, we've had some issues before with having enough space close enough for people to have adequate seats. So we're hoping that this can kind of alleviate some of that and give everyone the space that they need um, to scout and to cheer on their teammates and do all the other important things. Um, <clears throat> there will sorry, be a sorry, Emma, just just to oh. add in real quick. So yes. there will be the large black curtain between the main competition field and the practice field to provide some separation. Um, so nothing goes flying from the practice field over <laughs> um, and, and just general separation during the event. So, um, but this should open up, as you said, you know, kind of three of the four sides of seating though. Uh, hopefully that gives a, a better experience for a lot of our, our spectators that'll be there. Awesome, thank you, Barry. Um, and then right at the bottom, this is obviously not on the same floor, um, but if you use that elevator right here, you can hit fifth floor and that will take you to the Dean's List impact rooms um, and Thursday sessions will be hosted um, on the fifth floor in the conference rooms as well. If you're having any trouble figuring out when something is or where it is, I encourage you to check with Pitt admin as they generally have all of that info plus that detailed schedule we were just looking at um, and can always ask for help if they don't know the answer to something. And then um, for those of you that haven't had a chance to see it, I don't know if this has gone out in an email yet, um, but this is the official pit layout. It shows a little bit of what DJ was talking about for load in and load outdoors. Um, and then it shows things like the machine shop and then more detailed view of everything else. And I know that there were some questions about the machine shop, so I didn't know if any of my key people could speak to what will be in the machine shop slash um, what teams can look for in that space. We will have a machine shop. Um, it's being hosted by CNC. And it sounded like someone else unmuted to answer the question. Yeah, I, I expect it'll be similar to last year. I don't think we'll have a CNC. I think it's C and C hosting, right? <laughs> right, we won't. Yeah, Correct. there's no, yes. no mill. There's Tor not CNC. Yeah, yeah. There, there will be no mill this year. Um, but I think every, all the other equipment should be present. Is there Was there a specific question around that? Um, I think the question that got posted was just how will the machine shop at Seven Rivers compare to that of the Wisconsin Regional? So I think for our newer teams that Should don't know. OK. Should be similar, yeah. Um, and I think that if any of you cannot find something that you found at a previous machine shop at a previous event, the odds of another team having it are higher than you would anticipate. <laughs> Awesome. Um, great. Any questions regarding venue layout um, or anything like that? Um, I would also like to point out before we continue, because I saw my note about accessibility. So on the main level, um, so when you enter the venue, um, there will be like a ramp going up into the stands and there are sections on along every side that are designated for um, individuals with disabilities or differing needs that need those spaces and can't navigate the stairs or use the chairs or anything like that. So those are around the main concourse level and we do ask 
as we said earlier, with the being kind, being a good human, that you please leave those spaces available for people that need it. Um, I don't want to have to be somebody that asks people to move, but I actually want to ensure that we are being fair to those that do need it, as we have already had a request for those spaces. Um, if there are any specific accessibility needs that have not been communicated, but you do know of from somebody on your team, we would love it if you could let us know in advance so we can make sure that those needs are accommodated. Great. Um, Just a oh, minor thing. Emma, earlier yeah. you, when you were talking, the main entrance, that's Second Street. That's the street that goes out past the main entrance. Great, thank you. Um, I do see a question about what are there for concessions, and I am not the person to answer it, but I'm hoping one of the 40 people on the call does know what different kinds of concessions offerings there are. I do not have that list right in front of me, but we can get that to send out to the teams. But they it'll be the concessions inside the lacrosse center that'll be open throughout the day. Um, I'll see if I can get a list to send out. Um, I'll get that to you, Emma, and maybe to Betty uh, for any other email blasts to go out yet this week. Awesome. And I'll send that out with the call recording, so that'll work out perfectly. Um, and then just so everyone's aware, there are a lot of Phenomenal food places in La Crosse. So everything is terrific, not everything, but there are a lot of things in walking distance if your students need to leave the venue for a bit. Um, there's a phenomenal ice cream shop down the street. So lots of also local places that you can go that are outside the venue if you're tired of um, concession food. I think that I have hit everything venue related. Um, we've gone over schedule, load and load out, quiet rooms, chair rooms. Oh, oh this is Sherry. Uh, Go ahead, and Sherry. Um, speaking of food, did we talk about um, no outside food in the venue this year? We did not. Okay. And that is just something that we talk, we, we meet up with each year. Um, and since it's going to be in the 50s, dress warm, and we have a fabulous park along a front street called Riverside Park, and there are picnic benches and places to set up a picnic if that's what you bring with your, your team. And I also noticed um, the pathway um, from Riverside Park up to um, Second Street, from Front Street to Second Street is now available to walk. Uh, along so easy access and they did have a couple um, it's a big cement slab so there were a couple tables out um, to so when you're looking at the front of the venue on the right hand side of the venue so you could sit outside and eat there as well perfect that's good to know I was I'm also just to take my food out there mm -hmm. it's I mean the weather's gonna be great um and it does say that food and drink purchase at concession stands can be in, in the arena seats or at or in the seating areas around the center. Awesome. Um, we've gone over venue layout, local area, um, parking info. Looks like I'm looking at EMTs and emergency procedures. So as I showed in the um in the arena view earlier there will be ENTs on site anytime that there are students on site um so those are available at any time for any sort of injury whether you think it's minor or not please feel free to let them know um because it's their job to be there and then they can help us um with any sort of things that we need from there um any specific I want to hand it over to Barry for emergency procedures because he rocked it so well for Wisconsin. <laughs> he did, and he's he's ready. We I, we pre prepped. Yeah, so I mean, for emergency procedures, if if anything comes up, uh, please do not do not call nine one one. Please identify um, if you want to go to pit admin or find someone who is walking around with the earpiece and uh, walkie. Um, please do that. We will get a hold of. Um, 
the uh, the event uh, coordinator that's running it with us from show ready and get a hold of the venue to to take the appropriate action. So um, please let us know. I, I recommend probably just going to pit admin um, if you're in that area uh, or if you don't see someone immediately that has um, that has an earpiece on that uh, can help you. Awesome, thank you. Um, I encourage you as we're nearing the end of my content here for any mentors on your team that you think need to view this or may have questions and um, want to follow up with this, feel free to pass this video along to them. I unfortunately only send it out to my lead and alternate contacts for each team. So it doesn't go out to everybody, but I hope that we captured a large enough group of you that we all feel relatively prepared for Wednesday evening. I have covered all of my main things, so I would love to give everyone a moment if there are any final questions, any random questions related to nothing we have discussed so far that you're like, why haven't you told me about this? Or why have we not talked about this? This is your time to speak up and let us know. A quick note from your game announcers. Um, if you could possibly get a picture of your robot out on the Blue Alliance, that makes our lives considerably easier. And since our mission in life is to make your team and your robot look as cool as possible, uh, having a uh, having an upfront idea of what it looks like is a big help. So it's very simple to do. Go on the Blue Alliance, look up your team, say you want to post a picture of your robot. Um, it's it'll take you maybe if you're totally not tech savvy. You should be able to do it in under 15 minutes. So, but it's a big help. Um, and if you can take care of that, uh, we will talk to your teams when they're in the queuing lines. Again, our mission in life is to make them look cool and be celebrated at the event. So it's okay to talk to us. Um, we want to hear about the robot. I geek out on robots all the time. So um, whatever you guys can uh, do to uh, help us, we'll, uh, we'll definitely pass that information on to the crowd. Awesome. I haven't seen. Oh, this is Jane. Been... Is Dwayne Lom on the call? He's not. Oh, okay. Because he's been in contact with Jenny, who used to work with Tormach, and she is trying to come and she's trying to bring some machine because she needed a trailer, but Dwayne was handling that so i guess i can't say what she's bringing so it'll be a surprise sounds good um so one of the questions was are we planning to use the frcq slash nexus app so do we have our lead queuer on yeah yeah, this is Sharon Baylor. I'll be the lead cure. And we are planning to use that, is my understanding. I was told devices would be provided for me to use because they said it was hard to do on just a cell phone. So I'm planning, I have not used it. I plan to practice with it during the practice rounds too, and we'll see how it goes. But I heard very positive things about it. So it's my goal to use it. Excellent. And worst comes to worst, if something happens, uh, we will be able to have paper backup. Great. Well, I am happy to stick on for a couple minutes in case any final questions come up. Um, but I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining us here tonight. I am so excited to see all of you in just a few short days in lacrosse. Um, I hope the rest of your early weeks go well. We will see you this this upcoming weekend. And if there are any final questions or questions that come up after this call, feel free to email me, send, call me, whatever works best for you. You can also, um, we'll be posting this on the First Wisconsin uh, YouTube page. And so then when Emma sends it out, that'll be the link that you're able to grab. 
have a wonderful evening, everyone.